Okay. Uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can see the okay. screen. Great. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Well, or good evening, uh, <clears throat> depending on your location. Uh, so I am Peter McLaughlin. I am a uh, operations manager at QChem and also a staff scientist. And my primary responsibility um, for the past few years has been updating the geometry optimizer in QChem. Uh, it's one of our oldest bits of code. And there's been um, a lot of work by myself and a couple of others who have worked on creating a new geometry optimizer in QChem. And so we'll talk about um, geometry optimization in general in QChem, but then uh, you'll get to use the new optimizer, which was implemented in 6.0, and then use some other um, uh, jobs that kind of fall in the geometry optimization realm uh, within QChem. Um, so let's start kind of with a brief introduction to the theory of geometry optimization. So if we have um, potential energy surfaces here, which kind of come from using the Born-Oppenheimer approximation of the Schrodinger equation, which we can split the uh, motions of electrons with the motions of the nuclei, we get this um, kind of uh, position-dependent uh, Hamiltonian and energy uh, Schrodinger equation in which um, you can see kind of the R dependence. And what this actually allows is the kind of construction of potential energy surfaces, because as the position changes, the energy, the electronic energy changes. And so you get these surfaces that are now dependent on structure. Um, and so what we have here is kind of a very simple potential energy surface or semi-simple potential energy surface in which um, you can imagine it as, you know, mountains, valleys, and, um, and hills uh, is kind of the typical analogy to potential energy surfaces in which you um, have kind of saddle points in which are high or low points and then minimum where the energy is the lowest. And so you kind of traverse this potential energy surface in geometry optimization to better analyze your, um, to understand your structure or different components. Um, for example, this here has um, many different solutions. There's Kind of transition states where it's talking about a minimum product a on this side in this minima uh, coming over to a transition state as it falls into a minimum for the reactants in which here is a transition between both the products and or the product and reactant and so if we look at kind of this slice um, from this multi-dimensional potential energy surface as a 1d slice we can kind of describe chemical reactions in which we have our reactants here so this is a, a chloromethane with a bromide ion in which there's a substitution as the uh with the this is your potential energy surface and then you have your reaction barrier in which you're at some transition state and then you have your products in which there's this sn2 reaction and some reaction energy so this is kind of a, a slice of the potential energy surface and one thing to know is that this potential energy surface here um is kind of described in terms of basically two coordinates, uh, but you in your molecule, you have many coordinates. And so that's a multi-dimensional potential energy surface. So it's kind of sometimes hard to observe, but this is graphically the same in which you have these surfaces that you're exploring. And so how do you kind of do that? Well, if we think about the energy, you're at some position, so are not here, and you want to move towards the minimum. So you're going to create a step. So H here is a step in which you're moving uh, from your current position to some other position. And you can do a Taylor series expansion of the energy function that um, I showed before, and you get all these terms. And so if you know the exact, with all the exact uh, expansion terms, you could kind of find your minimum exactly, but you, you can't do that. So you kind of ignore the higher terms. And as we, so we're going to ignore the higher terms, but then as you, um, differentiate with respect to the step that you're generating, you um, get this component, you get these components here where we're ignoring the higher terms. And what these turn out to be is the gradient and Hessian of um, your energy with respect to position. And so you can use these to generate your step in which this is the newton raphson step where you have your exact Hessian and your exact gradient, and you can kind of create the step that will minimize your energy. And so that is what you're doing uh, in geometry optimization is you're exploring this potential energy surface. So say you're at some point uh, here near the top, you're going to get your gradient and um, your Hessian and then create a step that will point you down the, the minimum of this potential energy surface. And you're going to iteratively do this um, until you reach the minimum, which is based on some convergence criteria that you set. But you're essentially starting and rolling the ball down a hill. Um, and geometry optimization and moving along kind of the lowest energy pathway through this step. 
Now, um, one thing to note is that needing a Hessian is very expensive um, in general in um, your calculations. So a lot of geometry optimization is actually about approximating this Hessian. Uh, so most of it, this is um, the exact newton raphson steps. So this is when you have the exact Hessian and gradient. Um, in QChem, we, you can do exact Newtons. Uh, you can use an exact Hessian if you want, um, but not all functionals or energies you have have analytical Hessians and they could be costly. So uh, we use quasi-Newton methods, which are ways to approximate the Hessian in which you kind of start with an initial Hessian, uh, depending on kind of a model um, that's based on kind of semi-empirical, you know, bond lengths and things like that, or kind of really simple based on um, the topology of your system. And then your optimization is actually doing an approximate update of the Hessian based on gradient. So BFGS is a, the common one. Uh, QChem offers a wide variety of uh, Hessian methods in which you're approximating, you're updating this Hessian approximately with the gradient. And so that way you don't have to have the full Hessian and the, or the exact Hessian to create these steps. And so you're approximating that in each iteration to obtain a minimum. Um, so that is some of the basic theory in which uh, you're generating this step. And so that's kind of where uh, geometry optimization lies is generating the step to find a minimum. Uh, so here's kind of an overview of geometry optimization capabilities in QCAM. Uh, so there's uh, different coordinates in which you can optimize, whether it's Cartesian, Z-matrix, or internal coordinates. So internal coordinates um, are bond lengths, angles, and torsions, and things like that. Um, if, for those who are not familiar, uh, you can do equilibrium structure searches. You can do constrained optimization searches in which you're constraining you know, bond lengths or angles and things like that. Transition state searches, in which you're finding kind of the transition between a reactant product, for example. Um, there's different uh, varieties of initial Hessians you can use in QChem, as well as a variety of Hessian updates. They all have their kind of own flavor of what they're generated for, um, or their pros and cons, essentially. There's um, some that perform better for transition state searches, for example, or some that try to maintain positive definiteness in the Hessian, which could be a problem in optimization. Uh, but there's a wide variety of options in QChem. Then there's intrinsic reaction coordinate in which you are um, trying to find, uh, if you start with a reactant product, uh, the transition state is kind of doing a transition state optimization is really dependent on your initial structure. And you guys will possibly see this in one of the labs that I have in the transition state lab, in which if you, you kind of need a very good initial geometry for your transition state. And re intrinsic reaction coordinate helps with that, in which it's going to try to find kind of uh, some of the, uh, it's going to connect your pathway and you'll, uh, sorry, you'll do a pathway search along this to help with that. And then minimum energy crossing points along conical seams is um, if you imagine an ex excitation, uh, you have your ground state and excited state potential energy surfaces and minimum energy crossing points is the finding this uh, transition between those two. So much like how uh, you have a chemical reaction, there's a transition state and you're kind of on the, you're talking about the ground state of a reaction. Uh, Minimum energy crossing points, it allows you to find this transition between a ground state and an excited state um, through the conical intersection. So that is also available in QChem. There's potential energy scans in which you can change kind of a coordinate and see the energy change of changing some torsion or angle or bond length. Um, freezing string method is also available in which it will help you... Um, Find transition states as well, and then application of pressure, which is from a, one of our developers, in which they you can add external pressures, and you can see how pressure affects a molecule. Um, for example, um, kind of, I think their main example is compressing water or something like that, if I remember right. And you can add these external pressures and see how kind of an optimization occurs uh, with these external fields. Uh, so I do want to give a brief overview of kind of the labs and what you'll be doing. So there's five labs um, that I have planned. Uh, you should be able to do all of them. Um, and they're all kind of hitting a wide variety of geometry optimization capabilities in QChem. Uh, so first, you're going to start with a ground state optimization alene. Uh, and I want, this is not available as a molecule in IQMOL, and that was on purpose, um, right? Geometry optimization is kind of the first step in most uh, calculations because um, not everybody including myself, can perfectly draw the energy minimum structure. Uh, so you 
in general will draw a molecule and then you should be able you should minimize it so that way you can then uh, proceed with your analysis whether that's spectral analysis or you're doing some sort of excited state methods or you know looking at dft energies you really want to start from the uh, minimum structure and so you'll use this using the atom tool um, and then you'll add the hydrogens to that and then you're going to use the minimize energy which is uh, this button here i think i have it Oh, I don't have it highlighted, um, in which that is a force field minimization. So one of those things this helps with is create a better structure for you for starting your optimization, um, because it will uh, point out any anomalies you have uh, in your drawing. For example, if you draw your carbons too far apart and you click that, it could uh, separate them rather than creating a bond. And so this does a very simple um, force field optimization. So that way you can know your initial structure is kind of drawn the way you anticipated it and then you can start your optimization so you'll do a simple Hartree fock sto 3g calculation so that way it's quick and you guys can see uh the final result is the final energy is here so that way you can compare the output is also available on the google drive so you can have the output to exactly look at the structures to make sure it matches but there's the energy for you to check uh, next you'll do a ground state optimization and vibrational analysis of dialanine dialanine is available in the uh, molecules as part of the database in the amino acids and IQMOL. And the reason we're looking at this is mainly for this vibrational analysis. One of the new things in the new optimizer is this uh, vibrational analysis tool. Uh, before in QChem, you would run an optimization and then you have to run a second job of the frequency because um, in general, these kind of go hand in hand as you do an optimization. You want to verify that you're at the ground state, um, which is dependent on the Hessian. So you need to calculate the Hessian because you've been doing these approximate Hessian updates and the new optimizer allows this kind of in a simple one one job and so this is how you would do that um you would add this bit into the generate input file and add a Hessian verify which is to recompute the Hessian at the end and then you're going to do a vibrational analysis um this allows for workflows um and generally did two jobs and in this case you could do it in one job and so this was um a simplification for our customers and it's a nice tool that most uh, a lot of people have requested so this is available and so you guys will get a chance to look at that and then you can look at the frequencies and i report the lowest one here uh, so that way um there's nothing of particular interest with the lowest one possibly but it's just to kind of match so that way you can see uh, next you'll do an excited state optimization of aline uh, this is a, i suggest starting with your ground state optimized structure and so you can do that um and then at, this is how you add um, the excited state optimization in which we're going to do CIS um, since we're doing Hershey Fock. And so you'll do uh, five roots, and then you'll want to only calculate singles. You don't want uh, the triplets in your calculation. And then the CIS state deriv is telling it uh, QChem on how you want to, uh, which excited state you want to optimize. And then this will allow you to optimize the excited state uh, uh, potential energy surface of this molecule. And then here's the results for that. And then um, this is the transition state optimization I'll have you do, which is an SN2 reaction of bromine and methyl chloride. Uh, you'll have to draw your structure. I advise drawing your the uh, linear component of the bromide, uh, carbon, and chloride ions uh, pretty close together. Uh, if you don't draw them close enough, you will get a failure. And this is part of uh, one of the struggles with transition state optimizations is creating great structure. And then um, you will unfortunately not be able to use the add hydrogen tool because um, it's based on valences. So it's going to try to add four things and it will not add the correct number of hydrogens or it'll add to more than you anticipate. And it won't be kind of in this uh, planar structure you need them to be in. So just hand draw them and then use the energy minimization tool. Um, and one of the things about transition state optimization is it's advised to use the frequency, uh, an exact Hessian to start. It um, helps your optimization. And so what you'll actually be running is a frequency job. And then you will add these this bit at the end. And these ampersands are for, um, or these, these at symbols are for um, how QCAM registers as multiple jobs. So you're actually going to be running two jobs uh, in one input. Uh, the first will be a frequency and then uh, QChem will register that there's a second job happening and you get to use these uh, read functionalities, which include reading the molecule and then reading this exact Hessian. And so this will allow you to read the exact Hessian and then perform transition state optimization, which is more useful and helpful um, as you have the correct uh, Hessian rather than approximate one as you're searching um, for the transition state, which in general only has one negative frequency. And so that's what you're trying to uh, 
you're stepping towards because you're you're really trying to step uphill on your potential energy surface to a saddle point. And then finally, you'll do a potential energy scan of butane. Uh, the optimized structure is available on the drive. If you want, you could draw butane and then optimize it yourself and then run the potential energy scan from there. Um, you can do it either way, depending on the time. And you will add this, uh, you'll do a potential energy scan job type in which you'll scan the torsions for one, two, three, and four. So that's the carbons here. And you're going to look at kind of the, um, the potential energy surface. So if you double click the scan geometries, uh, which will happen after the results, you'll get this um, picture that hopefully everybody is very familiar with in which these are the different um, rotations of uh, the methyl groups around the center bond. And you can see the potential energy surface here of the molecule as you go from um, anti-symmetric to eclipse to uh, gauche. And you can see all these different, um, the energy and the potential energy surface of this molecule. Um, so that is all I have. We can split out into the breakout groups and you guys can try all these labs. Um, since we didn't have time to do some of Martin's labs, you could also do some of those or you can add some, um, I would suggest very small uh, functionals, you know, B3 LYP with the same basis sets. Uh, if you are more interested in that, um, try to keep the, we're trying to keep the job types low. So that way you can kind of run everything. So uh, just be mindful, don't run a you know, as Martin suggested, uh, a rung five with uh, quadruple zeta, you will not finish in 10 minutes with that job. So um, I don't know if there was questions asked during this or not. It doesn't look like it. No, I can't see any questions mm. being asked. 